So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an Amazon seller account. I'm going to walk you through every step of the process of creating your account so that you can begin selling on the platform. Now, there's about nine different steps of this process, and I want to take you through each one of them because I've gotten a lot of questions from people from some of our other Amazon videos who've had problems signing up to become an Amazon seller. They've had issues, they've had questions, and the truth is, is that this is a pretty long application process. There's a lot of information that Amazon needs from you in order for you to get approved to become an Amazon seller. And I want to help you with that in this video so that you don't take any missteps and to increase the likelihood that you get approved to sell on Amazon. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. If you're new here, by the way, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. We help people sell products online with the marketing, with growing the business in general. So I would really appreciate the subscription and let's go ahead and get started with this. Now, the first thing that we're going to do here is I want to dissect the difference between the two different types of Amazon seller accounts because it's going to be one of the first things that they ask you uh, when selling on Amazon. So what I want you to do is you can open up another tab or you can just watch this video and do this later, but you're going to start off on sell.amazon.com. Now this works in most countries, not just the United States. And this is where you're going to actually create your Amazon seller account. All right, so let's look at these two different account types that we have. So we have the individual selling plan and the professional selling plan. Now the main difference between these is just the price. So with an individual selling plan, you're going to pay Amazon 99 cents for every item that you sell on the platform versus the professional account where you're paying $39.99 per month, but you're not paying that fee per item sold. Now, personally, uh, I would suggest most people sign up for the professional account. I think the only reason why you might want to do an individual account is maybe perhaps you think you're only going to be able to sell like 10 or 20 items per month, then you might be better off with the individual account. But if you're planning on selling more than 40 units per month, then you are going to be much better off with the professional account. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. You also get a lot of other features as well when you're signing up for the professional account. So let's just go back to the homepage here and let's go through the sign up process for creating this Amazon account. So let's click on sign up here and we're going to create a new Amazon account. Now you could use your old Amazon account. Like most people have an Amazon account. They've bought something on the platform. I would recommend just doing this separate from your personal one. Cause if you're launching this as a business, you probably want to use a different email and everything else with that. So let me just fill this out here and create our Amazon account. Uh, and we'll move on to the next step here. Okay. So I've created my Amazon account and now now we're going to go through the application process to become a seller. So we're just going to have to answer, answer some questions, make sure that you have some documents ready. They're going to ask for identification. If you have an LLC or a business set up, they're going to ask for tax information, bank information. It can get a little bit complicated, but don't worry. I'm going to walk you through every step of the process with all the questions that they ask you to help you get this set up. Once you have your Amazon account and you get to this page, we can just click on get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is tell them where our business is registered. So we're just looking for the country here. So for us, for me, it's going to be United States. I'm going to click on save and continue. And then you're going to answer what type of business you own. So uh, for most people watching this video, you're going to choose a privately owned business. The differences between these a state owned business is basically if you're a government business, publicly listed business, I think would be something along the lines of if you're on a stock exchange. So like a big company, uh, if you're representing like um, Coca-Cola or something, trying to set up an Amazon account, you would use that. But if you were a privately owned business, you would use this one right here. There are going to be some people as well who maybe just want to sell as individuals. You don't have a business set up. You just want to sell products, uh, you know, by yourself and not through a business name. Then you would choose individual and then there's charities as well. So for me, it's going to be a privately owned business. I would definitely recommend doing this. If you have not set up a business yet, we have tutorials showing you how to set up an LLC or a C corporation or any other type of business, I would really recommend it if you are going to start selling products on Amazon. It does a lot of things. It has uh, typically has tax benefits by setting up a company, but also can provide liability protection so that if someone tries to sue you, you might have some protections in some cases if you are a business rather than a person selling on the platform. So if you want to set up a business, we, we use something called Taylor Brands. I'll leave a link to it down below. Uh, it's really useful. Uh, it's called Taylor Brands and they will help you to set up 
an LLC. And so if you want to form an LLC, like I said, I'll leave a link to that down below. Uh, you can form it for a very low cost. It's for free plus some state fees on the platform. So, uh, and that is an affiliate link. We get paid a little bit from them when people create a business through Taylor Brands, but help support videos like these. I just build my coffee. So let's go back to this section here. Okay, and so now I'm just gonna enter in our uh, business name here. So for this uh, example, I'm gonna use Ironwood Maple LLC. Maybe we're selling maple syrup and we wanna list that product on Amazon. So privately owned business and we entered our business name there. Once again, if you're an individual, just choose that and you can put in your personal name. I'm gonna click on save and continue. Okay, so as a privately owned business, this is the stuff that we're gonna need. We're gonna need our ID. We're going to need a bank account or a credit card statement. You're going to need a credit or debit card and then also a mobile phone. Now, I don't know why, but I've seen a lot of problems with people trying to use debit cards. I, typically, if you have a credit card, I would use that one. Um, I don't know why Amazon has been rejecting people with debit cards, but just something to keep in mind that I've noticed. So we're just going to acknowledge that and then click on agree and continue. Okay, so now we're getting into the interesting part where it gets a little bit more intricate. We have five sections here. We have our business information that we're going to enter. Then we enter our seller information our billing, and then we create our store, and then we go through verification steps, um, sometimes in which you'll even have to set up meetings with Amazon if they require it. The most recent uh, Amazon store I created, they didn't make me get on a call or a meeting with them, but sometimes they do that. For the business information, uh, let's go through every section here so that you don't take any missteps and end up getting rejected. Company registration number. This is going to be the uh, number that you got from your state when you created your business. So when you create your LLC, the state is going to usually give you some type of number that's going to identify your business. If you're in a different country, it might be a little little bit different, but you're going to want to find that registration number and put it in there. So let me just do that now. And then I'm going to enter in uh, my business address and I'm going to click on next. All right. So we're filling out more of our business information here. So let me put that in there. All right. So for primary contact person information, a lot of this is going to be straightforward up here, but at the bottom side here, we're going to have some important questions. So point of contact is a beneficial owner, director, trustee of the business. You're going to say yes, because you own the business. And then the primary contact person is the only beneficial owner of the business. And so if you have business partners, you might have to say no for this. If you own 100% of this business by yourself, then you can say yes, and you're going to have to not put in as many details. If you say no, they're going to ask you more questions about the other people who own equity in the business. Make sure you're truthful with this. Sometimes you're going to have to get other people involved, other business uh, partners involved uh, when signing up for this Amazon account. Those are the important questions there. And then you have to just have to check that box. So let me fill this section out right here. All right. And so we've moved on here and we're looking at the payment information now. So what we're going to need is a valid bank account number that we're going to have to give to Amazon so that they can verify that. But also that's how we're going to get paid by Amazon. And then you're going to want to make sure that your bank account is in the name of you or your business name. So for example, if you're creating your Amazon account for like Maple Ironwood LLC, but then you try to connect the bank account to like your mom's name, it, it it's not going to work. Amazon's going to throw up a red flag and you're going to get rejected. So make sure that the bank account name matches uh, whoever you're signing up for to be the Amazon seller. That's a very important step there. Um, and I've seen people get rejected for not doing that properly. So uh, you can also uh, upload a bank statement later on if they need extra verification on that. So let's go ahead and fill out that payment information now. Okay. And so for my bank account, it wasn't eligible for instant verification. So they're just going to ask us to upload a bank statement uh, sometime later on. Make sure you check your email because sometimes you'll actually get a person reaches out to you and asks for specific information. So we'll just continue on for now and we'll move on to the next step here, which is the payment information. This is to pay your monthly subscription fee to be a seller on Amazon. So let me put that in now and we'll move on to the next step. All right. So now we are on the store and product information section and they're going to ask you a few questions. So we're going to put in our store name. I would recommend not putting in like the LLC or dot inc or any of those because this is what's going to be showing up uh, to people who are buying your products. You can make some modifications, but it makes it a lot more difficult when you try to modify it later. So I'm going to leave out that LLC thing and just say Ironwood Maple for our store name. And then it's going to ask you, do you have universal product codes or UPCs for all of your products? Now, a universal product code, the way to get this and what this is, uh, is it's essentially what you'll see as one of these barcodes, like 
this is not my product, but it's a really good coffee. And uh, barcodes, this is one of the ways of displaying what a universal product code is. So if you want to get those barcodes for your products, you're going to go over to gs1.org. And this is where you can get those product codes. Now it costs about $30 to get one of them, but this is going to be important as an Amazon seller. Now you can also have things called ASINs, which is an Amazon barcode. We can talk more about that in some other videos, but that's going to be an important step for your products. Uh, I don't think you need them right away to start selling on the platform. Like you can probably say no and still get approved to be an Amazon seller, but if you do have them, great. So I'm going to say yes. Now, uh, do you have any diversity diversity certifications for me personally? I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't believe I do. So I'm going to say no. And then do you own a brand or do you serve as an agent or representative or manufacturer for a brand? So yes, I own the brand. If you don't, you're going to have to explain who you are in representing the company or the product that you're selling. So I own the brand for Ironwood Maple. We're selling maple syrup. So it's pretty straightforward with that. And so the final question here is, does your brand have an active registered trademark? So Amazon really does prefer when brands have trademarks. Uh, if you don't have one right now, it's okay. You can set one up later. But if you wanna join the Amazon brand registry, which helps so much for your Amazon uh, brand, you can do that and you can create a registered trademark. It'll allow you into that brand registry program. It also is really important to have a trademark because it improves your defensibility on the platform. So the truth is, is that when selling on Amazon in 2025, let's say that you start selling a product and you start to get a lot of sales, you're going to have other people who are going to steal your IP. They're going to steal your brand image. They're going to steal your, basically your entire business and use your branding. And the only way to protect against that is to have a trademark. Um, so you can look up or you can create trademarks on USP. TO, um, I believe it's USPTO.gov. I will leave a link to it down below in the description and you can file for trademarks on there. If you don't have one right, right now though, that's okay. We're just gonna say, no, we don't have an active registered trademark at the moment. And then we're gonna click on next. All right, so now we're in the uh, identity and address verification step here. We're almost done. So let me scroll down and we're just gonna upload our driver's license, the front and back of it, or your passport, whatever you selected earlier. And then also proof of address. So this is usually gonna be a bank statement or a credit card statement, you're going to upload that and then they're going to verify everything. Now, in some cases, people are going to get approved to be a seller on Amazon after this step. And that's all that needs to be done. But in other cases, they're going to require more verification. If something doesn't match up or maybe you're outside the country, there's a lot of reasons why you might get more questions when creating an Amazon seller account. So let me just outline what would be the next steps if that happens. So there's cases where you will have to set up an interview with someone at Amazon and they're going to ask you some more identity verification questions. Don't sweat over it. They just want to make sure that you're a real person and that you are who you say you are and you're representing the business that you say you are representing. In other cases, I've seen them actually send uh, postcards with like one time passwords or codes that you then have to put into your Amazon account to verify that you actually have like you actually live where you say you live or the business is located where you say it is and you are a real person once again. So those are some of the verification things that I've seen in the past. Regardless, don't worry about them. Just answer them honestly um, and you have a pretty good chance of getting approved to be a seller on the platform. So those are the steps of creating an Amazon seller account. I can take you inside of the seller dashboard in one of the next videos and show you how to list your first product and other things that you would like to see. If you have any questions, if you have any problems along the way, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below, or, um, or you can send me a message on Instagram and I'll try to respond to you. If you're having any, having any issues, I'll try to help you guys out as much as possible. So thanks for watching the video. I hope this was valuable to you and I wish everyone the best of luck selling on Amazon.